Hello, let's learn about a traditional labor market in a perfectly competitive setting. So uh, so we make some uh, assumptions. We're going to do uh, labor markets. Now labor markets, uh, think back to the beginning of class, uh, we put everything together to make some uh, kind of economic output or production. Uh, and what we get uh, to, to create that, we have to combine land, land any natural resources, labor, and capital, and this is going to this is going to cr uh, create something, right? So this is factors of production, um, and we've already kind of learned this: so labor, people working, lands, and natural resources, and then the capital inputs are those uh, capital goods, those equipment, tools, anything like that. Okay. Now, in the factor market, which we're going to learn about here, uh, it's the firm that demands land, labor, and capital and it produces some kind of output so it's it's backwards right so the the um, workers supply their labor to the firm uh, landlords or or people that own natural resources they supply that to the firm and then other firms are going to supply capital to the firm okay so important to think about everything is is backwards okay from what we've been traditionally thinking about and uh, the word for this is derived demand so the the factors um, demand themselves is derived from whatever uh, the firm's going to make, right? So the firm asks themselves, how much am I going to make from this? And then they're going to supply that, and then that's going to create the demand for the product. So right now, it's uh, late 2017, firms are building houses again, and as they build houses, as they supply more houses, this is going to cause the demand for bricks and copper wiring and other things to increase, right? It's also going to cause the demand for construction workers to increase. It's going to cause the uh, demand for real estate to increase. Okay, so we get all of all of those. Okay. Okay. So I just had to pause the video real quick there. You didn't need to know that anyway. So <laughs> back to uh, back to our labor market example here. We've got. Um, We've got an assumption here where a farmer uh, is going to produce some kind of agricultural product. Uh, they need workers, and the workers are going to be um, perfectly competitive, right? In other words, they're replaceable. Uh, what are we going to look for? Well, people to show up. This is important to think about as a manager. Uh, can they do the job? And how much are you going to pay them? You're going to pay them the lowest price that they're willing to work, right? Or uh, whatever they're uh, whatever it is on their demand curve. Okay, so make a couple of assumptions. These are pretty standard. Typical firm is a price taker in this uh, market, so they're going to take whatever the, the wage, going wage really is. That's what the workers can get paid. And we're going to assume that uh, they care about maximizing profits, which means uh, they're going to hire workers right up until the price of those workers uh, equals the benefit of having them there. Okay, so here's our Farmer Jack competitive example, kind of same thing. Uh, now the benefit from hiring another worker, uh, it, if it exceeds hiring the if it exceeds the cost, then Jack's going to hire the worker. If it doesn't, he's not going to hire the worker. This is uh, this is kind of an abstract concept, but you can actually use this kind of thinking to uh, get yourself a raise, right? If you are more valuable than the what they're paying you, you can ask for a raise, right? If the product that you're selling is becoming more valuable, you can ask for a raise. If it's not. Uh, you either need to start looking for a new job or think about how to make yourself more productive. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got a production function. You've seen these in the book. So we're going to produce some some wheat. The more workers I get, uh, the more wheat I'm going to produce. And eventually uh, we start to hit diminishing marginal returns, right? Those additional workers aren't as productive as the first couple workers. Okay, so this leads us to something called the marginal product of labor. We need to know what this is. Uh, marginal product of labor is the additional production from each labor unit. Okay, and so the formula here is the change in quantity over the change in labor. Okay, pretty standard here. So here I've got a bunch of workers. Here I've got total output, and then here I've got the marginal product. So uh, the way I like to do it is to go from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. Uh, some people like to subtract, right? So you know, the first marginal product of the first worker is 10. Marginal product of the second worker is 18, okay, and so on and so forth. Or you could take, to get the third worker, you could take 54 and subtract 28, okay? So worked all these out. Important to look at here is uh, when do diminishing marginal returns begin? Uh, and it's at the fourth worker or after the third worker, right? So as a manager, I can ask myself, well, what's going on here? Do they need more room? Do they need to take a break? 
uh, what's going on here? Are they using their phones or whatever? I don't know. Uh, and these this eighth worker, there's a real problem here, right? So that's something there. Now, the cost of producing another worker is the wage, and the benefit of hiring another worker is measured in units of output. So I need to convert marginal product of labor into dollars. So to do that, I'm going to multiply it by the price of whatever I'm selling. So it's the productivity times the price, and this gives us the value of the marginal product, usually of labor, but it could be capital too. So the value, value of marginal product of labor is the additional um, value that they produce times the price that we're going to sell it for. Okay, and in the next uh, clip, I'll do a couple examples of that.